What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Starcom Unknown Space. We checked this game out when it was kind of like a pre-release demo. And now the game's been out for a good solid year, for like a year and a couple months. It's time for us to check in and see what's going on with it. This is kind of like a curious space game. So I know you guys are big fans of space games. I too am also a big fan of space games. Uh, this is a game that is all about basically like a Starfleet Federation. This game has a lot more in common with something like Star Trek than it does with something like Star Wars. Uh, this is a game where you are part of like a Starfleet organization and a wormhole opens up and sucks you and one Starfleet station to the opposite end of space into uncharted territory where nobody has any idea where you are, how to get to you, how for you to get back home or anything else like that. And the goal now is for you to leave that one base that is now being used as kind of like a forward operating position. And you need to fly around the galaxy and investigate how you can get back to earth while at the same time making contact with alien races like these dudes over here, uh, making friends, making enemies, resolving quests, ultimately doing research in order to go down a tech tree to unlock more ship parts to make your ship even bigger and even bigger until eventually it's like a capital class ship. And that's the entire core gameplay right here. I dig it. I think the game is pretty cool with regards to that premise. And I think, honestly, it's one of the prettier top-down space games out there, except for, like, Wayward Terran Frontier. So we're going to check the game out now for about 25 or 30 minutes. If you're wondering why there's so many checkups going on right now on the channel, that's because there are no releases till like, next year. There's, like, none. Uh, there are very, very, very few releases, and the releases that are here are, like, 1.0s for stuff that we've covered in the past. And so it's just going to be one of those kinds of couple month periods where we just kind of like retread ground that we've already hit. If there's something new coming out, we'll hit that occasionally too and check it on out and add that on into the docket. But for now, this is the time where we got to kind of like batten down the hatches and just kind of like hang out for a little while until stuff starts releasing again. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, the game is in early access. The developer... Uh, seems to be the kind of developer that is constantly checking in. So I kind of like, before I cover games like this, I tend to do sort of like these little checks of everything. The forums, the last bunch of posts that a developer made, stuff like that. It seems like this developer posts very, very, very often on the Steam updates. Uh, just letting people know what he's working on, letting people know what's important, what needs to be fiddled with, and where the game is going. And so he seems to be quite attentive. Uh, it seems like there, there's nothing worse than an early access where they never say anything and then they release like stuff like every nine months or so. So you just have that never ending undulation between dead game. Oh, nope, it's alive. Dead game. Oh, nope, it's alive. I definitely prefer it when developers check in a lot and they're like, hey, here's what I'm doing this week. Makes it easier to back a project, I suppose, alongside the link that you see down below. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live. But we just landed on a planet. That's right, we're doing planetary survey right now. Planetary interaction. This moist planet <laughs> is mirroring the early genesis of life on Earth. Some very simple single-celled organisms are aggressively converting the anaerobic atmosphere into an oxygen-rich one. Uh, so we can do a study here. Basically, these are going to have different difficulties. You have crew members on board. They level up. That's where some of the RPG mechanics come from, is that as they get better at their job, they can specialize further and become better, like, biomedical technicians and stuff like that. When you do this stuff right here, it's quite literally just going to roll a D100, sort of like Dark Heresy style, and then it has a modifier based on how difficult it is. And then the number that comes out the other end, it goes the number you rolled minus the 20. If it's below like 10%, it's a critical failure. But other than that, it kind of just determines how successful you are. After investigating several locations, Cadet Rhea reluctantly announces that there's nothing to learn here that couldn't be found in a first-year astroplanetary exploration textbook, but the search isn't a complete waste of time. A side effect of the organism's biology concentrates deposits of yttrium. Good. Yttrium's kind of hard to come by, so I'll go ahead and take it. Some of our command crew have now leveled up. Good. So if we go to the crew tab over here, you can see uh, that we can go to these crew members, and they get points, and we can kind of just allocate them. I kind of recommend you just sort of, like, dump them where they need to go. Like, I don't believe in spreading things around in games like this. That's not how I play the game, but my Ensign First Class is going to be an unabashed master of Xeno culture. He's going to be the man at Xeno culture, all right? Because when we run into Xenos, 
laser blasts tend to fly around when we, we don't know their culture. Uh, this game is very beautiful. I don't know if I mentioned that previously in the intro to the title, but this game is utterly gorgeous. I can only think of Wayward Terran Frontier as like a prettier top-down game. This is a really good looking title. Who's this guy? What do you want? Our time is valuable. I don't know who these guys are, but they got really cool tusks, and I wish I was playing as them, dude. They have every look of a race that I would totally play in a space game. I always go for, like, the weird orc guys with the tusks, man. I don't know. Tusks, they just exude power, dude. When you come across a spacefaring race and they have tusks, you know in that second they're about the business. Those people are a problem. Uh, so wreckage from a ship with now familiar red and yellow markings are scattered across the desert floor. Besides aluminum, the debris is mostly unremarkable. You've gained 22 aluminum. Well, good for us. I'll go ahead and take that. We open this on up. Are any of my crew, like, ready to go? Like, my engineering guy or anything? Is anybody ready to rock? I guess it was Gleesa that came through with it, huh? Which, oh, uh, yeah, it's you right there. I'll probably spread some points around better on other people. But we already had somebody that was kind of like better at biomedical stuff. I do like that skills stack, though, in this game. Like, they don't overwrite one another. So if you've got somebody that has like a 9 in biology, and you have another deck officer that has like a 2 in biology, you get an 11. The, the more powerful one does not supersede the lower one. The lower one does not get like a penalty, so like they add half their bonus or whatever, dude. Uh, it looks like I have now sufficiently studied the economies in this region that we can research trade analysis. This technology will reveal how much of a premium traders are charging. Yeah, there's a trade system in the game. I found one or two alien trade posts. The game is weirdly not that reverent, so, like, I don't remember the exact events of the first game or if aliens were, like, rare in the universe. But, ooh, another survey. Nice. This is a very productive galaxy right here, or system. This planet was home to late pre-industrial civilizations in the last 200 to 500 years. Based on radiological dating, a mere blink in geological timescales, there are plentiful sources of text for the Universal Translator. A dominant theme is the imminent return of a celestial emissary. Descriptions of it vary, although the consistent element is a long blue trailing veil suggesting that it's a comet. The latest surviving texts are confusing, making it difficult to discern between religious beliefs and scientific observations. The textual record is complete, but it appears the civilization's collapse was very close to the arrival of the emissary. There was a dramatic... Oh, he had a culture. So this is basically like if they have really good skills, they get critical hits when they like analyze things, and it'll give you more context, which is always nice. Like They give you enough context to go off of from like the basic explanations, but even more context that makes you like have a little bit of secret information is always fun. There was a dramatic polarization of the culture as to whether it was a good or a bad omen. Linguistic conflict symbols suggest that the culture may have been starting to collapse before the emissary arrived. Interesting. We do have a couple more places around here that we can look at, but ultimately my main goal at the moment is the second that we got teleported on over to this system by the wormhole, we came under attack by what is effectively a massive fleet of red ships. And so we're investigating where the red ships reside at so that we can basically erect a defensive cordon around our forward operating station at this point. Because as far as we know, we are the only humanity on this side of the system. So... We're, we're trying to stay alive as much as possible. Another planet over here that we can take a look at. Let's go ahead and scan it. We got anything good here? No anomalies detected, but the mesosphere of the planet is unusually dense and warm due to an unusually high level of capture with cosmic rays. Well, there you go, dude. Who doesn't love cosmic rays? Have we hit everything here? I think we've hit everything in this area. So I think we need to go to that flinger gate right there. Our sensors are having a hard time getting data on this object. It's creating a strange warp field. Wait, what are we talking about here? Did it just go past? Can we catch it? Something flew past. So the game doesn't pause when you're inside of... The game doesn't pause when you're inside of menus and stuff like that. So every now and again, I'll be doing something, and something will, like, fly past me, and one of my officers will comment on it. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Ooh, buddy. Okay. I don't know what you are, but... I don't know. Do we lick it? How strange. 
I think that's part of what makes this game unique, though, is that you come across stuff like that all the time. I found a dodecahedron the last time I played this game that, like, unfolded from certain walls and stuff that was erected as, like, an ancient security system for, like, a system or something like that. Kind of like you come across weird things in this title where you're just like, what in the hell is that? And you don't know if you should touch it or not. Off to the Flinger Gate we go. You may have noticed there's something called the Void Effect in the bottom right-hand corner. What exactly is the Void Effect? The Void Effect... So this game doesn't have fast travel, but it does have sprinting for your ship, and it does have boosters. The thing is, the farther you are from anything of note, the Void Effect is a hard multiplier for your basic speed. And so it's the way the game kind of like balances and fixes the fact that your ship is kind of slow and space is kind of big. Uh, you can also exacerbate this right here by adding wings to your craft. So it's not a thing that's outside your control either. Uh, it is very much a thing that is inside your control. Uh, you are also like not confined to these little flinger gates like EVE Online style. Wormholes are how you fast travel. Uh, you see that star right there? We can fly to that using just dummy piloting, and there will probably be something there. Uh, this is the way the game is teaching you that not everything is on like a galactic trade lane. Sometimes it's a good idea to just click on that star right there and go, go, go see what's out there. What could possibly be out there? And use the void effect to get there pretty quickly. Let's find out. We're about halfway there, and it looks like our scanners have turned on a gas giant of some kind. Ooh, there's a bunch of little craft down here. Okay, we may want to add a scanning module then. That way we can actually scan, like, further out just to kind of see how things work. If you're wondering why my ship is called the Cacklecraft, it's because... It's because the captain's name is Tuck Tickleman, by the way. It was, it was a pun about him tickling everybody on board. Uh, we do have some combat coming towards us right now. Luckily, it's very small ships that do not pose a threat. We're going to go ahead and take everything that they've got. We want to get the ships first. Oh, we got bigger ships out here. Okay, yep. Hey, what's up, big boy? How you doing? You feeling spicy out here? Well, you're going nowhere. Destruction of ships in this game is modular, as you just saw in that gunfight right there. Oh, when they explode, they damage me if I'm too close. I just learned a new thing today. Anyways, uh, destruction of ships is modular in this game. If I shoot you in the engine, that engine falls off. If I shoot you in a gun, that gun falls off. And so your ship is not like a complete and total unit in this game. Uh, it is the sum of all of its little parts. And shipbuilding is a very important part of this game. You can see there that he's got deflector bulkheads on that side. In general, you want to avoid shooting deflector bulkheads uh, because they mitigate damage by like 50%. I also have deflector bulkheads on the front of my craft right there. Basically, anywhere you see... This game's building is hex-based. So anywhere on my ship you see a half a hex, that's a half an armor plate that I've put right there that just gives us flat damage reduction to our hull if we get shot along that plane. Now, did this over here have anything else going out for us? No anomalies detected. Okay. Uh, we are going to want to... Oh, it won't let me save. All right. Uh, we are going to have to... So I keep waiting for ships to go away out here. We may need to retreat. It seems like they're reinforcing pretty quickly, and we're not repairing rapidly enough, I think, to buff out the damage. The good news is we can easily outrun them. Like, these guys are much slower than we are. So all things considered, we're, we're pretty safe right now. Let's scan that planet. Uh, no anomalies detected, but this one is made out of helium. So the planet went through partial fusion at some point. Don't know what that means. Me geologist, me just like rock. But you know, it sounds important and it seems like it made the science officer pretty happy. So take from that what you will. Oh boy. Okay, guns are being fired. I'm running for my life. Let's see if we can pick this guy off right here. I think we outrun him. Yeah, he's a little heavier than us, so he's turning around to come about. All right. The more of them we kill, the safer we are. Let's go ahead and get this guy over here. Controls inside of combat feel good. Uh, there are... So it does seem to kind of, like, space out your guns. If you have, like, five of the same gun... It seems to make them fire on like a 0.2 second spacing or something like that to sort of simulate machine gun fire. I'd like to have manual control of that delay like you can do in Star Valor. Uh, in Star Valor, you can manually select each gun at the shipyard and you can decide what the offset is going to be. 
uh, for its firing pattern. And you can make some really cool firing patterns that way. Got you. You're now down. Oh, oh, I shot the wrong people. Who are you guys? What do you want? Our time is valuable. You just, like, invade the system right now? These guys are the Ermir. That's what they're called. I think they did, dude. I think they just, like, invaded. I think they came here to stomp out some pirate booty hole is what they came for. Oh, yeah, dude. There's a lot of fighting going on over here. Oh, buddy. It's about to get spicy on this side of the sector. All right. Let's get in here because this is a really great opportunity to get a whole bunch of rare resources that we can use to build up our ship. Uh, these opportunities do not come around very often. We're going to fall back behind the Ermir here real fast for damage control. I don't heal very quickly. I haven't put a lot of research into repairing my ship, like deck crews or whatever. Hey, we got them engines off, though. We're helping. We're helping. We're not completely useless out here. Put a few more shots across the bow right there. Let the uh, the old energy recharge for a second. Then we'll loop back around and try to stay with the Ermir. Because this is a pretty big scrum right here, dude. This is a this is a pretty wild and crazy dogfight. Oh, man. They're really coming out. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Okay. Yep. Giant space station. All right. Well, let's go ahead and neuter him real fast. Knock off all the engines. Apparently, we found a programmable nanite superfluid, by the way. No clue how that's going to be helpful, but hey, it gave us research points, so I'm okay with it. Let's come about real fast, and the combat in this game is quite visceral. Like, I like it. It's fun combat. It's enjoyable. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for us to pick up goodies for when we go back home, because I still think I've got like 10 or 15 slots left on my ship that I can fill out before I have to buy, like, the next upgrade, basically, uh, for my ship hull or my command deck or whatever. Let's go ahead and shoot his wings off. This guy's floating scared. He's dead. All right. We're going to want to pull off a little bit. Ooh, it is a fight over here. It looks like the Ermir have mostly gone down at this point. There's only like one Ermir craft left. If I could hit my shots right there, we could aid him a little bit. Apparently, I'm doing a very poor job at hitting my shots, though. These ships have no armor faces on them, which makes them really easy to splash. So many goodies, dude. I cannot wait to get back home. Uh, does that thing shoot at me? I don't know if that thing shoots. Maybe, maybe not. It looks like it's busy shooting at the Ermir right now. Okay, now it's shooting at us. Let's go ahead and rotate out. The Ermir are going to do their thing. When we see the Ermir take aggro. We're going to add some shots in right there. We don't have health bars or anything, so it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, I think the army are about to get dunked on. I think they're having a bad time. Yeah, they just re-diverted guns, but it wasn't good enough. Okay, you. Uh, it's all on us now. So if we can... Oh, boy. Yep, there's a lot of you guys over here, huh? Alright. Well, let's see what we can do. We want to avoid losing engines as much as we possibly can. Oh, we picked up a missile guidance system? Hell yeah, dude. Uh, so this game is an action RPG. This game is actually Diablo in disguise. Uh, not in turn. Oh, okay. Yep, that was a big chunky missile. Uh, I puckered. I puckered a little bit. I'm not ashamed to admit. I puckered a little tiny bit. I got a little tiny bit scared. I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen right there. But I definitely didn't want to wait and find out. Uh, let's come in for a stroll. Oh, hey, pop goes the weasel. Apparently, the Ermir got it real close before they went down. Good for the... Oh, there's a lot of ships over here, though. Oof. I'd rather, like, not be getting shot right now. I'm not really super interested in, like, 4v1ing either. These guys aren't quite as bad. These guys die pretty quick, like these little firefly-looking guys. So I think I can get them. There we go got one wing that's not looking so great it's a little it's a little scru it's a little scruffy but I think we can pull it off can I save yet oh dude I'm so worried about dying here because we've done a lot of stuff they keep busting shots on me from off screen too it's okay if he gets my wing I don't really care about that the wing is not like the important part yeah swing around like that so I can shoot your engine off there we go 
This guy's coming back around, dude. We're gonna finish this fight off. What a hell of a fight to capture on camera, man. Really enjoyed that. Like, this is what's showing off what's fun about the game's combat system or whatever. I haven't unlocked a lot of the later on weapons, things like missile launchers and whatnot, but we just got one. I also have an auto cannon that I've been reassembling, but I haven't found all the pieces for it yet. I've got like two out of three pieces of like this alien auto cannon. Oh wow, they just keep jumping in, huh? That's how that's gonna be. Okay. We may have to go back to our space station then and resupply a little bit. I don't think we're quite gnarly enough right now to withstand kind of the withering fire that we're receiving. Like, we're definitely getting shot more than I would prefer to get shot. There is a potential threat in right... Yeah, but like, my entire body is on fire right now. Listen, buddy. You don't want to... You don't want to cause these problems with me. All right? You don't want to, you don't want to cause these issues. Was there another station? I thought I saw another station over there or something like that. The Ermir jumping in might have been the only thing that saved us on that conflict. They sure do like to strafe, don't they? They want to joust real real bad. There we go. We got them. All right. Our surveyor is being fixed right now, but I did get to save the game, so that's a plus. Survey deck is now repaired, so let's check this Terran-looking world right here. Looks like a nice world. All right, so what looked like a small spate port from lower orbit turns out to be a fully automated manufacturing facility. Tracked robots carry ore from the nearby hills to a refinery that's connected to a main structure. A partially assembled Red Raider drone is being assembled on the launch pad. Uh, we can investigate carefully. Ugh, that was a terrible roll. Uh, Cadet... Cygnus Lee reconnoiters the area and plans out a path that will allow a quick retreat, but the caution seems to have been unnecessary. The facility has no ground defenses. After gaining entry, the team is able to explore freely. The complex is old, but well maintained by robots. What does I say? The process that creates the drone parts is very advanced. It's probably capable of automating almost any machine production. The complex is old, but well maintained by robots of scarce sentience who ignore the team's movements. From inside, they can see the processed ore turn into advanced ship components. With the team's unfettered access to the systems, it seems like it would be simple to shut down production. Okay. Uh, Cadet Glisa identifies uh, the main controller systems. After a bit of tinkering, the machine stops. The production is halted, and the team is able to help themselves to the processed ore. Nice, dude. That's so much titanium and yttrium and whatnot. That's going to be really, really helpful, dude gonna be oh this was the red raider region i guess that makes sense considering how many red raiders there were in fact in this region uh we do have our secondary menu over here do we have any crew that are ready for promotion not quite yet inside the cargo bay though we have a lot of things to investigate so we have a missile guidance system uh this is part of an autonomous faster than light missile how would that work a faster than light missile, man. Because like energy increases with relativistic speed, right? So what would even be the point of including an explosive on it? Like if you can get it faster than light, you might as well use it as just like, you might as well just fire high density rods if you're going faster than light, right? Like unless, I mean, I guess unless the warhead itself is also relativistic, I don't know. Not my area of expertise. We have a fixed plasma weapon here. Hey, I can build a new plasma gun. Nice. Designed for a fixed gun with a longer range and more power. Hell yeah. What is that? It's warp telemetry beacon probably used to coordinate big ship movements from central locations. Oh, it's a coil device. I thought it said recoil device. Enigmatic shapes. An intricate set of nested movable polyhedra. Upon deeper analysis, there are mover parts inside moving parts. Cells interlocked. Uh, down to remarkably small scales. Uh, there seem to be rules governing how the interlocking shapes can move, almost like a puzzle game. Interesting. I mean, I think, honestly, it's time for us to go back to... I think it's time for us to go back to the central station that we started out from. It's this guy over here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick on the autopilot, and I'll show you how the progression mechanics work inside this game. So you can decide whether or not this is a game for you, but honestly, I think this is a really laid-back sort of star trek tangential game and there's not a lot of that out there like the stuff that tends to go in that star trek tangential direction in sci-fi game almost universally turns out to be like i don't know like uh, almost like 4x strategy games like stellaris type stuff 
I'm under attack. I don't like being under attack. Can you stop making me be under attack? Can you do that for me? Because, like, look, I've got these laser cannons, right? And I'm going to... Oh, your laser cannons are charged up. My knee... I gotta put mine back on the dock, dude. My, my laser cannons are kind of burned out right now. Ow. Okay. Yep, used to have a survey unit. Not anymore. Kind of like how you used to have an engine and a body that wasn't just disincorporated red mist. There is another station over here, by the way. We should probably splash that, too, while we're in the neighborhood. This is just a little tiny station. Oh, that gas giant looks delicious. That's not what you expected me to say, huh? <laughs> Dude, it looks like a delicious candy planet. Don't judge me, all right? It looks like delicious candy planet. That's what it looks like. I want to lick it. All right, so here's our home base, the last uh, refuge of humanity over on this side. And this is where we're going to get access to all the fun stuff that you want to see. Uh, so we'll start with the research bench. This is the research area. There are quite a few researches. I'd say I've probably been playing the game for roughly two hours right now. And I've only knocked out like... Probably like eight researches. Uh, you gotta get out there and explore to get them points in order to knock this stuff out. And I've been kind of like picking off the things one by one that I wanted. But what we really need is we need battle station training. That'll make us heal faster outside of combat. Not having that has been a little bit of a headache. Every crew member with at least one biomed increases recovery speed by 10%. Okay. Fair. I do think the trade analysis is not a terrible idea. That way we can get better deals. I don't think we finished the missile launcher yet. Well, didn't it say we unlocked? I think it said we unlocked it. Um, I can unlock the explorer hull right now, which would allow me to have... I could, I could put in a new, a new bridge, basically, that would allow me to use 40 cells to build my ship instead of the 30 that I have on the scout hull. So that's not a bad idea. Bring us up to, like, frigate levels of efficiency. Whether or not we're going to actually have the resources to do that remains to be seen. What does Chirolite Capture do? It increases your energy production rate. Yeah, that'd be nice. I could see that being useful. Plasma 2. Don't really need that just yet. I'll probably just save the remainder. This is the shipyard. Uh, this is where you can build your ship from all those resources we've been picking up the entire time. Uh, if we want to build a new ship, we just go like this. And you say that you want to go up to an explorer ship, for example. We'll need to find three etherine. And we'll need to find about two more titanium, I think. But if we can do that, we can install an explorer bridge. Uh, which is much, much larger than the scout bridge. For right now, uh, I'm at 18 cells out of 30, so we still have plenty of room to grow on this craft right here. Uh, the game is really, really easy to do stuff with. Like, seriously, like, building a ship is, like, super easy in this title. Uh, so we could go for, like, a light bulkhead right here if we wanted to, uh, just to encapsulate the stuff that we've got going on. Then we could take a half deflector, and we could take this guy and slap it in right there just to round out the hull a little bit. And we could probably go with like, well, we got like a survey lander right there. Survey lander has to be on the outside of the deck, so we can put it right there. Uh, we probably, I wonder if I could even this out. What do I have for armor? Do I have like a full armor? I do have a full deflector, but it looks like we need a lot of iridium for it. So technically I could make these out of like full protective things, but... I wasn't quite sure that would go right there, but hey, what do I know? Looks like it go right there. Okay, uh, we'll probably leave it the way that it is for right now, unless I can half deflector this right here. Honestly, that kind of has a cool look to it with the edge right there. I kind of dig that. I'm kind of like here for it. Like I kind of dig the way that it looks. Oh no, dude, I can't, I'm not symmetrical. I can't get another half armor deflector over there. Because I think that's our weakness right now. I think our weakness isn't firepower or speed. I think our weakness is effectively that we just take too much damage when we get shot. 
And so increasing the, the tankiness of this craft feels like it's going to be a principal thing that I should probably be working on. But there's, like, connectors, you know, if you like to build ships that have sort of, like, crane next to them, and they like to bask, and they look a little bit more bird-like or, like, Klingon bird of prey-like. You've got basic connectors, thick connectors, stuff like that. You've got batteries, which will help you uh, store up more electricity uh, while fighting with enemies. So technically, we could plop that right there. And then were we to exit the dock? Oh, I gotta go to ops first. Yes, 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 yes. I'm at the end of the video. It's fine. Cadre you. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, but what you'll see is that I store way more energy now, which means I can keep my guns operational for a lot longer. Uh, now I also have a special ability called Battle Stations uh, that I can activate. A lot of these things down here, like Autopilot, or battle stations, or greetings, we are the Gorir. We have made contact with your representatives at Kaleno. Are you Commander Tickler of the Cacklecraft? I am indeed. We understand you are an explorer in this space. We too are seekers of knowledge, but we have been here longer. We are happy to share our learnings and hope you will share with us. Yeah, you seem like nice guys, sure. Wonderful, we too are happy to share what we know. Okay, what do you know about the artifacts? Wondrous things. All, of course, know the great gateways used by the Fallen Empire to maintain control, whose shibboleths are now jealously guarded. Ooh, that's a hell of a $5 word. A shibboleth is like a test, basically. <laughs> it comes from the Bible, where there was a certain group of people that I think the Canaanites interacted with. And because of their accent, they couldn't say shibboleth. It would come out like sibboleth. And they used that to figure out who spies were, is they would force you to walk up and say the word shibboleth. And if you couldn't say the word shibboleth, they put you to death. I might be off. It's been a long time since my church and days. Uh, most say the Empire built them. It's true that the Empire was capable of great things, like these flingers that connect local systems. But we believe the gateways are much older. And we have heard of other artifacts, much larger, with their own secrets. Giant devices of limitless power, unbreakable yet broken vessels, worlds surrounding worlds, and more. If you find any such things, share with us. Uh, we saw a fast-moving object with a long trail. Ah, an emissary. Some regard them as an omen of good luck. There are others that followed them to their demise. Where those stories would have come from as mysterious as the emissary themselves. Such is the nature of superstitions. We have detected them briefly on sensors. I suspect they're probably probes of some kind. Well, there you go. You make space friends too, but kind of a cool game. Uh, the thing that I was saying though is they need more visual indicators. So like when you're in battle stations, like the edge of the screen should kind of pulse red. You know, and there should be kind of like that sound that the Enterprise makes like that noise, you know, like when you're like fully on red alert and you're like in combat positions. Or for example, when you kick on uh, the cruise control, it should kind of be like kachunk, and it should zoom the camera out a little bit for like that tactile feeling of actually pushing a shifter forward and the ship launching into like a faster state of forbearance. Little things like that. Dude, I want my armor to be symmetrical so badly right now. I'm deeply upset that this side doesn't have the same lip that that side has. Re. Uh, but yeah, this is Starcom Unknown Space. Hopefully you guys dug it. I think this game is really cool. I've been watching the early access develop over the last year. It's been my pleasure to cover it again. I think it's a pretty game that goes in a different direction from a lot of other space games out there. And so it definitely has its own niche. I'll catch you all later. Thanks for hanging out with me. And that's about all I got. Bye, folks.